In my previous video on use flags, I covered making modifications to your use flags in a global way using profiles as well as setting the use variable in your make.conf file. In this follow-up video, I'm going to go over ways that you can make per package changes to your use flags to enable or disable features of your programs on a package by package basis. There are a few methods that I'm going to cover regarding this topic and I'm going to address a few general use flag subjects that I didn't get to in the last video. So let's get started. As I said in the last video, use flags are keywords that represent certain concepts. When you activate these keywords, you cause programs that you install to be compiled with support for these concepts. For instance, if I enable the KDE flag, any programs that I install that have optional support for KDE will be compiled in such a way as to enable that support. Conversely, if I disable the KDE use flag, none of the programs that I install that have optional KDE functionality will be compiled to support that functionality. Now, so far I covered enabling and disabling use flags globally for all packages on the system. But we often want to set use flags only for some packages. That is, we may want certain functionality for some of our programs, but not want that same functionality for all the programs on the entire system that may optionally support it. Controlling use flags on a package-by-package -package basis like this is actually quite easy in Portage. To begin with, you can set a use flag for a single package by declaring the use variable when you emerge a package. For instance, if I were to emerge the VLC media player, with emerge-p for pretend media video VLC. You can see the use flags I have enabled for it. Let's say I want to enable DVD support for my VLC media player copy. I can enable it right here when I emerge VLC by typing use equals and then in quotation marks the name of the use flag DVD followed by space emerge dash p for pretend because we're just demonstrating here media video vlc and as you can see the dvd use flag has now been enabled along with a number of additional dependencies that would be needed in order to enable that use flag for vlc so if we did an actual emerge here vlc will be compiled with dvd support just like that using that use flag on the terminal of course, we were just pretending there. It's important to note that if you wanted to actually successfully emerge that package in this way, you would need root privileges. sudo should be used in this case like this. sudo use equals the use flag, in this case DVD, emerge, and then media video VLC. And this will enable DVD support in VLC successfully. It's important to keep in mind that this method will only set this use flag when you emerge the package this time. If you emerge the package again, such as during an upgrade or reinstall, it will be emerged without any use flags that you might have defined directly here by declaring the use variable. This method that I've just demonstrated is really only a suitable method for activating use flags if you only want the flag enabled temporarily. In fact, the Gentoo wiki actually mentions this particular method of enabling a use flag under the declaring temporary use flag section of their wiki page on use flags. So just be sure to keep in mind that this method is only meant for setting use flags temporarily and not permanently. The next method of setting per package use flags involves the etsy portage package.use location. In my case, etsy portage package.use is a directory but it may be a single file on your system. Since it's a directory on my system, I'm going to demonstrate how to set per package use flags here when it is a directory. If I ls in this directory, you can see that I have several files here. These files are named after packages. For instance, here's vim, krita, dwm, and others. And each one of these files defines use flags for that particular package. There is a specific syntax for these files, which we can see if we open one, say sudo vim git. As you can see, the syntax is very simple here. On the left-hand side, we have a package category name, followed by a forward slash, followed by the package name itself, in this case git, and then a space, and then a space delimited list of use flags. These can either be explicitly enabled use flags like curl and gpg here, or explicitly disabled use flags like Emacs here. 
any use flag changes that we make here in this file will be applied when we next try to emerge the package that is addressed here. For instance, let's enable get Emacs support by removing the minus sign at the Emacs use flag name. If I write these changes in exit and then try to emerge git, you can see that the Emacs flag has been enabled for git. Unlike the use variable declaration that I demonstrated earlier, this method will cause the use flag changes to persist even during later upgrades and reinstalls. This is the main way to set per package use flags permanently. And there is actually a bit more to the syntax of the package use files. Namely, in those use files, we have the ability to set different use flags per specific versions of a package. So let me clear off here and open another file, in this case, ffmpeg. You can see that I have two lines in this file. The first line, which begins as I demonstrated before, with a category name and a package name followed by use flags, and the other, which begins with a greater or equal to symbol, followed by the category and package name, and specifies a version after the package name. What this second line is saying is, apply these specific use flags only to versions of FFmpeg that are greater than or equal to 4.1.3. The top line, however, is saying apply these specific use flags to all versions of the package FFmpeg. This syntax is very useful if you install more than one version of a program, which Gentoo does allow you to do, or if you frequently change versions of a program for some reason. Now, if your package.use location is a directory like mine is, it will probably contain a file called something like ZZ Auto Unmask. As you can see, that file is right down here. I've heard of this file having other names, but on my system, it's called ZZ Auto Unmask. Now what this file is, is the config file that gets written to whenever Portage makes an automatic configuration change to your use flags, if you were using the directory structure for package use rather than a single file. What that specifically means is, if you were to install a package, like say sudo emerge libreoffice, right, and you can see down here that emerge is telling me the following use changes are necessary to proceed. And then it's asking me down here, would you like to add these changes to your config files, yes or no? This is because this package, LibreOffice, depends on certain functionality that's not enabled by default in some other packages, namely NSS support in XML, SEC, and CUPS support in GhostScript. I briefly described this in my previous video where I was talking about required use flags where certain use flags will have to be enabled in certain packages in order for other packages to be installed. Now, if I were to say yes here at the prompt to allow Portage to automatically modify your config files to enable these use flag changes for packages, then, Z, then the ZZ auto unmask file is the file that Portage would overwrite to actually make these changes. ZZ auto unmask is a list of packages and associated use flags that Portage makes changes to automatically if your package.use location is a directory. We can open up and edit ZZ Auto Unmask ourselves with Vim. As you can see, it's just a very large list of lines just like those in our package-by-package -package files that I demonstrated earlier in package.use. Uh, one minor new piece of syntax here is the lines that begin with a number sign are comments that are automatically made by Portage when it edits this file to explain what this specific use flag beneath it is being enabled for. The changes that this file makes to your package's enabled use flags will be applied at the same time as those changes that you make in the per package files that I demonstrated earlier. And in fact, if you do have a single file in your package.use location rather than a directory, it will probably look a lot like this particular file here, and its functionality will be exactly the same. It is where you will make your changes to enable and disable use flags on a package-by-package -package basis, and it is also where Portage will make any automatic config changes that you tell it to make. I'm going to talk now about use flag precedence. Each place on your system that you can define use flags has a certain precedence. Those places with a higher precedence will overwrite any changes that conflict with changes made in places with a lower precedence. To put it briefly, the hierarchy goes like this. The lowest precedence belongs to those use files declared in your profile. These are the ones that are declared when you choose a profile at Gentoo install time or change a profile later. They have the lowest precedence and can be overwritten by all the other layers. 
The next lowest precedent are those user-defined use settings in Etsy Portage Make .com. Now I demonstrated this file in my previous video. This is the one where you set your global use variable. It has the second lowest precedence. It will overwrite any conflicts that it has with the profile, but it will be overwritten by the next two layers. The second highest layer of precedence belongs to those use settings in Etsy Portage package.use. The package.use directory is where you define your package by package use flags. And so it overwrites the global use variable in make.conf and those settings made in your profile if it conflicts with them. This makes sense because you would think that if you are going to specifically define a use flag for a specific package, you would want it to have greater precedence than those use flags that might be declared globally and possibly conflict with it. And finally, the highest precedence actually belongs to those user-defined use settings when you pass use as an environment variable to emerge, which I demonstrated near the beginning of this video. Any use flags that you pass at emerge time are going to have the highest precedence of all the use flags on your system. They'll overwrite anything. That's an important caveat to keep in mind if you actually are going to use the temporary environment variable use flags when you emerge packages. The last thing I want to talk about here is very simple. It is how to apply your use flag changes to the system once you actually make them. This is especially important for changes to global use flags, such as through your profile or make.conf file, since those will probably affect a lot of packages. To apply any global use changes, you should run emerge with the new use option, like so sudo for root privileges emerge dash dash update to update your packages dash dash deep for deep dependency checking dash dash new use to indicate that there have been use variable changes and then at world to update all the packages on your system. This will update all your packages and apply any use flag changes that you might have made since the last update. Uh, this could be a pretty lengthy process, however, as this will also upgrade any packages that have updates available from Gentoo's repositories. Uh, you should do a depth clean after this process also, but it's important to remember to check any changes that depth clean might make before committing them since depth clean can be kind of dangerous to run. This process is actually explained on the Gentoo wiki under the section adapting the entire system to the new use flags in the use variable section of the Portage Handbook. And that about does it for this video, the second part of my series describing use flags and their many uses <laughs> in Gentoo. I hope these videos have been useful to you. I hope you learned something. And if you didn't learn anything, I hope I at least didn't get anything wrong. Um, feel free to address any mistakes that I've made in the comments, and I will correct them if I can. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.